All right, hello everyone. So the Fell Bullet Heathcliff and W Otis banner has dropped, and after looking at the kits a little bit, I feel like Otis definitely needs an ego to make her work. While Fell Bullet Heathcliff is a, it's a bit of a P Moon joke. I'll explain why, but this ego is actually quite functional for another ID, not the rabbit ID. All right, moving on to W Corp Otis. Why do I think so badly about her right now? Uh, that she needs an ego in order to work is because of this passive. She gains one charge potency every time she consumes 10 charge count. That means she gains one potency for one mind whip, essentially, right? This is really, really bad and will require an insane amount of charge count gain or an insane amount of charge potency gain somewhere else. But charge potency is so new that I feel like they're going to release an ego that makes the charge potency gain a lot better. So uh, let me talk about her charge count gain first. Skill 1 plus 2 plus 2, standard, right? Skill 2, I thought it was going to be a workhorse of a move. Turns out it's going to be uh, a, a more snowball move. It's, it's only when you're snowballing, you got a lot of charge potency, then this move here will actually make sense. Why do I say that? Because, right, let's look at this, we got 6 charge count consumption. And then on use, plus 2, on hit, plus 2, on hit, plus 2. So, you will be getting a whopping 6 here, and consuming 6 in order to gain the coin power plus 1, as well as work towards your passive. This is really, really bad. Because your skill 2 is normally, for other characters, a big source of charge count, and now this character has a zero, uh, net zero uh, charge count gain here. Of course, if you do consume, you do get charge barrier, which is going to be a plus 2 next turn. And this is the snowball part, because charge potency, with the recent rework for WOT specifically, you can go really, really high on the charge potency. It goes up to like, I think 99 or something like that. So yeah, it's really, really good to have a lot of charge potency here because you can get a crazy amount of barrier. But of course it maxes out at about eight charge barrier per ally. So getting up to six is already good enough for you. But to get there, as you can see from the passive, it's really, really far. It is 60 charge count consumption. Think about that for a second. That is an insane amount. That is basically 15, right? So 15, 30, 45, 60. That's going to be four maximum charge daters in order to hit that. And yeah, it's very, very slow as you can see because we got four charge count here and we got plus two at the start, right? Because we have no charge potency at all. The other charge count gain is your defense where you must eat three hits with this defense skill in order to get 6 charge count. And you are also pretty squishy, 174 HP at level 45 up to 4, yeah, that is um, really not great for a character. More of a DPS oriented stat line honestly, so yeah, you don't really want to be using this guard skill to take hits so freely. Moving on to the skill 3, right? This skill, the low defect, uh, load is a small buff. It goes up to 30% extra damage for the W Corp gang. It's nice if they're using like Daedarus and Rift Spaces, so that's going to be quite okay. But remember, it scales off the charge potency and it's so slow because of your charge count gain being so limited. So yeah, it's really really hard to get the maximum load of 6. The other cool thing about charge potency is that it lets you skip the consume 15 charge count requirement. You can go to 7 to 14 charge count to get the coin power plus 2. But remember what I said about the charge gain? It's also very slow. You need 20 consumption in order to get 2 charge potency. So that is going to be 2 uses of the rip, rip dimension pretty much or use the charge lead twice and then rip dimension once. And now you have 2 charge potency. Now you can do something. But by then, I believe about 5 turns have passed already. So if you compare the speed of getting here to other WCOP IDs, this is just not it. It's really, really not it. A nice bonus that this skill tree has is that it does give you charge count back after you hit with the 4th coin based on the charge potency. So if you're snowballing with the charge potency, you won't get anything back. But 
if you are at the start, it will give you something back to help you to kind of speed up the consumption along. But yeah, as you can see on this character, the charge count gain is just so slow, which affects the charge potency gain, which affects the load buff. And this character's damage is also limited because of 2 coin, 2 coin here, even though the clashing power is good. This thing with conditionals met will actually roll about 21, which is about the same as W Ryoshu's leap. And then the skill 3 will roll a 24 with conditional smash, which is a mind whip. So, in terms of damage output, in terms of charge count gain, in terms of charge and buffing potential, like this character is currently not it. Like, it takes too much effort to get to the level that you want. And this character needs an ego or a numbers adjustment to make her work. This is a very easy skip character in my opinion. The support passive is probably the most interesting thing about her but it's also really hard. Because you need 4 NV resonance to get and it only works when a charge count character consumes at least 7 plus charge count. So really only works on a few characters in this game and it's notably the like W Ryoshu W Dawn off the top of my head. So yeah, this ID needs an ego or needs heavy heavy support in order to make work. So that is pretty much my summary of this character. Not a high D, not a high priority pool character for sure. Uh, maybe the the next uh, warp uh, event, the upcoming warp event, will introduce something to make this make more sense and stuff. Yeah, maybe like a dimension shredder Otis that gives you a bunch of charge count or gives you a bunch of charge potency. Like that shit will definitely help with this character. So alright, that's pretty much it for this ID. Uh, another thing to note is that this ID is also a standard character, which means there's no rush to get her at all. You can wait for the ego to come first, then you can go and uh, spark this character at your leisure. Or you can even get spooked by her, she's a standard character, she can always be pulled. Right. Moving on to Fillable Heathcliff. Uh, for this one, I need to explain why I think this is a meme by Project Moon. It's because 7, 7, 7, jackpot, right? Then we also have 7, and then 7 poise. And then what's the jackpot? Critical kill. Ammo effect, gain 1 ammo 3 times per encounter. Alright, so this is the hilarious ego. Because in the P Moon lore, uh, in Library of Ruina, we were told that bullets are very controlled. Because guns and bullets make killing too easy, and they do not want to make killing too easy. They want you to beat people out of your fists, your swords, your your axes, your maces and stuff. So yeah, that's why most of our characters here don't really use guns. Uh, ammo is a very very limited resource and so they made it a jackpot thing in order to get a bullet back. 777, um, and then 7 here, and you need to critical on the second coin and you need to kill on the second coin in order to get the ammo effect here. And this is a single target attack. So you only get one shot to hit this. If you hit it, congratulations, you get one ammo back. A whopping one ammo back, alright? So, um, my advice here is don't expect this ego to actually give you ammo back. The odds are you're not going to get it. You need to jump through so many hoops to get it. You need to jump through a 6 resonance plus 1 hoop here. You need to, or, or a 5 uh, absolute resonance plus 2 hoop here. And then you need to gain your 7 poise. You have 1 poise count, so for rabbit with no poise count gain, you will only have 1 critical chance. And then after that, you need to hit on the second coin here and kill him with this. And you also need to crit on that second coin in order to get this. Yeah, it's just really, really, really low chance. I believe it's about 35% chance, right, to get a crit with 7 points. And you need to specifically kill here and blah, 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 blah. It's just really, really bad. Okay, but this ego is very good for Quick Quack. It's extremely good for Quick Quack. The reason being is that Quick Quack has a lot of voice count gain, but not a lot of voice potency gain. And this ego, guess what? It gives you a 7 points potency on use. And you also have 5 bleed potency and additional critical hit. And because Kwikwe is a poise character, um, she also benefits from getting all this stuff here. So that's very very good for her. The Corona effect, you probably won't be using it either, but it does give you the poise as well, but it also consumes your poise on self. So it's not particularly useful and it's only 2 AoE, so not that useful. The passive is also very useful for Quick Quack. 
The Crush Brandon passive, combat start at 3 plus highest resonance, you gain 3 poise potency. So another very very good poise gain option here. So with this poise potency here, with your maybe 7, especially with the resonance being so easy, you run with Ahab, right? So you are usually doing Envy chains or Pride chains, and then you, you get your bunch of poise, you get your passive generating you poise every turn, and you only need 3 res. Perfect! Ahab also, you just get 3 res and you can trigger the Ahab uh, skill too. So yeah, this is just ideal, honestly, for Quick Quick. It's just massive, massive for her. Um, at Atai 4, she gains 4 poise count here. The only poise potency generation is here. And she loves bleed, she loves critting, she loves... Um, uh, yeah, she loves critting and she loves... Uh, uh, additional poise potency and stuff so that she can continue to crit and do damage so yeah perfect ego for her the rabbit hit flip bullet thing like don't man like don't think about it it doesn't exist it is not real it is bait it is gacha if you ever hit it just take a photo because you really hit quite a tricky gacha right there and it requires so much setup that you worked really hard for that so just take a photo it will last longer than that yeah Alright, so that's pretty much it. For the charge team, right, I did do a little bit of theory crafting, but it's also not very promising. Um, w Homulu is technically a very good support for Otis, because if you uptie this guy a bunch, eventually he will start giving your allies a bunch of um, uh, charge count shields. Uh, I can't really show it here because I don't have it uptied, but he will, at higher uptie levels, give you a bunch of charge barriers, which will help to fund your character. And um, the other one that helps with this is also going to be W Faust. Uh, w Faust is a bit desperate though because if you uptie her, eventually she'll give you um, a random ally gains plus one charge count after an attack. That one is, yeah, it's, it's random so it's not ideal. The other one that helps is like Teleport Dawn because Teleport Dawn, if you uh, hit the passive, you give a random ally with charge charge count. The issue is, it's also random. So yeah, currently the only real hard support for charge count gains is going to be Honglu. So by default, you will want Otis and Honglu to be in the same team. And the clash power up is nice for Honglu to help him win the clashes. And Honglu's charge barriers will help to fund this guy's um, charge, barrier, charge count requirements. But yeah, until I see an ego for Otis, this idea is just complete dot water. So hopefully in the next um, uh, WCorp event, we will see a ego to fully support this character or other WCorp cleanup IDs to support this character. So yeah, tentatively, this Otis is just going to be sitting in the corner uh, in my dispensary just waiting for some cook to happen and then I will go and spark her and then run her with her W Corp team. But until then, not recommended at all. The Ego, I also don't recommend players to get yet. The reason being is that the big season ID for Heathcliff is still poised to come out. It's just near the end of the season that ID will come out and then you'll be able to uh, go and spark that character first because that character is not Walpurgis. Walpurgis is the only one that you need to pull on. Uh, since the Heathcliff ID is not Walpurgis, you can just go and spark that character. You should honestly just skip this fell bullet for now. Go and get that Heathcliff big ID. And then if you have spares, come and get fell bullet. Because fell bullet is once again also a standard ego. So there's no rush for this fell bullet. Alright, so that is my initial analysis of this egos and characters. Needs a lot of um, support for Otis and I expect the upcoming event to provide even more of that. And I think the Fell Bullet is a very good ego for Quick Quack Heathcliff specifically and a funny ego for Rabbit Heathcliff where if you hit, awesome. If you don't hit, well that sucks. A bit like Ring Beat honestly without any support. Alright, so that's gonna be it. If you have any of your own opinions, feel free to just comment them down below. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video guys thanks for watching and i shall see you guys in the next video bye bye